Hello, and welcome to my talk, Deterministic Global Nonlinear Model Predictive Control with Recurrent Neural Networks Embedded. My name is Danimir Doncevic, and this work was done during my stay as a graduate student at the Process Systems Engineering Department of RWTH Aachen University in the group of Professor Mitzos, and currently I pursue a PhD at Forschungszentrum Mülich under his supervision. Recently, data-driven surrogate models are being used a lot in process control, for example in the context of having a digital twin for optimizing process design and controllers. And the advantages of data-driven models are threefold. A. They do not require us to have full mechanistic knowledge of a process. B. They can be obtained in a straightforward way from process data with lots of training frameworks available. And C. Usually there is also lots of data available from measurements and monitoring of the process. So among these data-driven models, the recurrent neural networks, as shown here, are a very popular choice. But when we use neural networks as models of the process, optimization problems in MPC become non-convex and many local minima may exist, as indicated here. And it was already shown in previous works by Cisner et Ultra, for example, that these local minima can lead to suboptimal controller behavior for some processes. For example, when there is multiple input configurations that would lead to the same set point. So what we argue is that it is desirable to find global optima in NPC, especially in modern applications such as economic NPC, which are used to uh, optimize the process economics together with controlling the plant. And surrogate models are being used a lot in this context of bridging timescales between scheduling and control to optimize process economics. So we believe that global NMPC, where data-driven models are involved to describe the process, should be examined. And the main drawback in global NMPC is, of course, that finding global optima is computationally quite expensive, but solutions must be computed in real-time in NMPC. And thus it is paramount that solution times for global NMPC are improved so that it can be used in more applications. Our contribution here is that we extend the recently developed technique for efficient global optimization with feedforward neural networks embedded to recurrent ones. And we apply this to MPC in a case study and we discuss ways to improve the computational efficiency of the ensuing problems. Our main emphasis in this talk are the computational solution times and how they scale for bigger problems. Okay, so which work has been done before on global and NPC? So there have been quite a few publications regarding global and NPC so far. I've listed most of the references here. And the ones using deterministic global methods, most of them are a bit older already. Only the work by Vanget Altra is more recent. And they have usually just dealt with small problems. So there have also been research regarding stochastic global methods. But stochastic global optimization cannot guarantee to find a global optimum and it is thus not related to our research. There has been no research regarding data-driven process models for global and MPC so far, and we are the first ones to use recurrent neural networks in this context. So in the remainder of this talk, I will explain our method in more detail and then I will show some results where I will put an emphasis on the computational aspects. Okay, so now we take a closer look at the proposed method. So first, a quick recap about global optimization as we will use it here. So if we have this black function here, the main idea is that we build these blue convex relaxations of the function, which help us to find lower bounds and convex subproblems. And then when we branch on the search space of the function, we can close in on the global optimum. Okay, so in this study, we're going to use McCormick relaxations to build these, uh, to construct these convex relaxations of non-convex problems. Okay, so another very important method which we will leverage in this work is the reduced space formulation for global optimization. So in this top box you can see the equations defining this neural network on the right as layer by layer equations. So if we now use this neural network within an optimization problem, all of these equations become equality constraints. And thus, as you can see, the decision variable vector of the problem also contains all these neuron states and is quite large. And in contrast, we're going to use the reduced space formulation, <coughs> which is shown down here for global optimization. And essentially, we eliminate all of these equality constraints by inserting these equations straight into the objective function. 
and this means that this means that um, in the optimization problem, only the actual degrees of freedom of the neural network, so in this case u1 and u2, also become optimization uh, decision variables of the optimization problem. And this elimination is quite straightforward because all of these functions are explicit ones. Yeah. So the trade-off here is that by building these um, larger functions, the relaxations of these functions become looser. So in theory, we need to branch longer until we find the global optimum. But our previous work by Schweitmann and Mitzos has shown that overall the reduced space formulation for optimization with neural networks is very, um, very advantageous. So this was the previous work done by our group. And in this work, we are going to use recurrent neural networks to model a process. So as you can see, the recurrent neural network is a feed-forward network extended by this recurrent path right here. Yeah, And this allows us to learn a function like this, where we predict an output based on previous inputs into the network and previous outputs of the network. So functions like this, um, they help us to learn the um, explicit discrete time dynamics of the system, and many dynamical systems can be modeled by such functions. Alright, so it means that when we create a sequence of predictions, as we do in NPC, we effectively stack RNN ev evaluations in time, like this. So these predictions here get passed on to the following time steps. And the big advantage of this prediction scheme is that the principles I outlined before for the reduced space formulation can still be applied for the RNN. So what changes here compared to the feedforward network is that by stacking these RNN calls, right here, the amount of neuron layers that are being appended increases, leading to an even larger objective function, and we now have further decision variables entering the network in between time steps. So this idea, using this recurrent neural network in a reduced space formulation, is related to the concept of sequential versus equation-oriented optimization, and in this context we're basically using something analogous to sequential optimization. Okay, so far I've explained exactly what happens inside the optimizer, so in this orange box right here. And as the optimizer in this work, we use our in-house solver Mango for global optimization, and Mango is built on using McCormick relaxation propagation to build these convex underestimations of functions. So now we're going to apply this as the model predictive controller to a case study, where we use a simulation model of the process as both the control system and the data generating process which yields the training data for our RNN. So if you're interested in details regarding the training of RNNs, you can find them in the conference paper that belongs to this talk. As a case study for the experiment, we have used the van der Wusse CSTR, which is described by the equation system given on the right here. So the goal is to control the concentration of the output component B which is a product of A, while both um, components are also degraded by side reactions. So this um, CSTR is a single input, single output system, which is frequently used in case studies for global NMPC, because it exhibits input multiplicity and inverse response behavior, which can lead to suboptimal local solutions in a control problem. In accordance with other researchers, we're using 7.2 seconds as a controller sampling time. This is also important to keep in mind for the real-time threshold of the global NMPC. So here you can see results of a closed-loop example, where we do set-point tracking with the controller. So we're using a quadratic objective function for the um, offset and to penalize control moves. And um, we, have, we have a higher terminal state penalty here, which is in line with what other researchers have used. So we're obviously having non-linearity, non-convexity coming in through the RNN process model. Yeah. And for the RNN, we ended up using uh, RNN with one hidden layer with five neurons and tangents hyperbolicus activation functions. As you can see by this tracking plot, the prediction accuracy of the RNN is satisfying. So these red crosses, they lie exactly on this thick red line, which is the actual measured system output. and um, yeah, we can also see that the tracking works satisfactory. So now we take a closer look at um, solution times for global NPC. 
And what we see in this table is in this right column, this is the highest recorded solution time for one stage of an NPC during a closed loop experiment. So this is to examine whether the real time threshold is met or not. And I want to point out that these um, comparisons here with other researchers are difficult because not everyone has used the same parameterization for an NPC. And they are further not conclusive because we also don't know what other people have used as settings in the global optimization algorithm. So in particular, in terms of the optimality gap upon termination of the algorithm. What we can conclude, however, is that our approach um, has no issues with the real-time threshold. As you can see, for each stage of NPC, the result was computed in less than 0.5 seconds. Further, we examined how the global solution time scaled when we increased the horizon lengths. So for this, we have taken one stage of NMPC from the problem shown before and simply varied the control and prediction horizons. So you can see on the x-axis prediction horizon from 1 to 20, and different markers indicate different control horizons, and we measured the solution time required to solve a stage of NMPC to global optimality. So note that the scale is logarithmic. So what we found is that increasing the control horizon leads to roughly exponential increased computational cost, which is kind of expected because adding variables to global optimization is expensive. But we have also found a similar increase for longer prediction horizons. Yeah, and this is linked to the tightness of McCormick relaxations that I have talked about earlier. So a similar effect was also observed by Shashua at co-workers in the study for global dynamic optimization. So take this sketch as a conceptual sketch. So the red line shows you the output sequence for a fixed set of controls U, and these blue lines show you the corresponding McCormick relaxations. And what you can see is that these relaxations are getting increasingly looser towards the end of the prediction horizon. So the question here is now, is there something we can do about this? And actually we have thought of something. So you can add few state variables as decision variables to the optimizer, as shown here by this variable which we named xi, and it enters the problem at time step kxi. So what it means is that we also need an additional equality constraint, as shown here, to enforce continuity at this position. And what this variable xi does is that when we branch on xi, we reset the relaxations to the current width of the interval, of the current branching interval from xi, as is shown here. So basically we get tighter relaxations at this point, which also leads to tighter relaxations towards the end of the prediction horizon. Yeah, and this is great, but the trade-off here is that we're adding variables to the decision variable vector, which is obviously costly in global optimization. And this is also exactly the reason why we don't want to do it at each time step, but we're just doing it sparsely here. So note that this idea is somewhat related to the concept of multiple shooting, and a similar approach was actually used by DDAM and Sager for global optimization of shooting methods. So in the next slide we're gonna look at results to show how much this trade-off can save us in computational time. So here are results for exposing one state variable to the optimizer, and we look at a single stage of NAPC again with a fixed prediction horizon of 15. So now the x-axis shows you the position at which C enters the optimization problem. So basically the position at which we expose a state variable as decision variable to the optimizer. And the y-axis again shows you solution time in a logarithmic scale. And these horizontal lines show you the solution times we achieved previously when only the degrees of freedom have been optimization variables and the markers show you the results of the current experiment. So obviously the idea is that we want to beat these lines, and as you can see, we are doing so quite convincingly. And another takeaway from this slide is obviously that the position at which the state variable is exposed to the optimizer is also quite important. So you can see that these positions somewhat earlier than the middle of the prediction horizon are optimal in our experiment. Yeah. So what we're learning here is that with proper placement, the reformulation where we're exposing few state variables to the optimizer can lead to high improvements in, yeah, in computational speed for global optimization in NMPC. Okay, let's have a short summary. 
So we applied global NMPC to a process with an RNN surrogate model for the first time. And to this end, we have leveraged recently developed reduced space formulation for optimization with feedforward neural networks embedded and applied it to NMPC. And we have also shown that our method reaches faster solution times in the Van der Wusser case study than previous approaches in literature. We have also discussed and demonstrated how to further speed up the proposed uh, method, particularly for NMPC with long prediction horizons, by a slight reformulation of the problem. So in the future, it will be interesting to apply the method to larger case studies, meaning more differential states and inputs, and also to different tasks like EMPC or scheduling. In these kind of problems, the incentive to find a global optimum is even more obvious because it increases the profit of the operation. So if you are interested in our method, the solver Mango and the toolkit Melon, which provides many different machine learning models for Mango, including the RNNs we used in this work, are both available on our public GitLab if you follow the links on this slide. Okay, this marks the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to answer your questions at the discussion panel.